the word of the decade, it's what we're all worried about, and all oh, social this and social that. But to be honest, it's been around a hell of a long time. Uh, New York Times, in their own dictionary, in, in ASCII, uh, describes it as a, a social instrument of connectivity or, or communication, which is kind of like this fence. Uh, analog social media has been around an awful long time. It used to be a piece of one meter paling that it used to talk about or talk her over. And all the news and views and all the recommendations within the local area was all supplied by that piece of paling. And delivered with a very strong opinion and, and maybe a bit of a whiff of eggs or something. So it's nothing new. What we're doing here and what we're all in these next two days are all about, it's nothing new. But, so therefore, why are we here? What, what are we trying to learn? What, what's the difference these days? Well, the power of word of mouth is growing. Uh, and it's having a massive effect on our lives and every day. Whether or not Hilda in the previous slide liked you or not mattered to you, but you could probably avoid her in many instances. But as consumers or as businesses or as advertisers or as friends, social media and is, is, is a massive part of our lives, all of our lives, on our daily basis. How people talk about us and how we talk about other people. The difference in the fence of earlier days is that it's not about having a point of view, but the ability to share it, whether informed or uninformed, with a very large body of individuals at a very, very fast rate. So if Hilda didn't like you, it might have taken three or four days before the whole street knew about it. But here, if no one likes you, the whole world knows about it, and they'll know about it instantly. Social media is word of mouth, really, and its power is growing. And that concept of search that we were all worried about five or six years ago is about sharing now. Sharing and recommendation is the new search. And social contribution is absolutely everywhere. We are all under so much pressure to be part of the conversation on a daily basis. Through everything we do, and everyone expects you to have an opinion, whether you're in your Facebook app or whether you're just walking down the street. If you haven't got an opinion, people are worried about what you are and, and who you are. So therefore, what are the tools that people use to judge your opinion and the tools that they get to garner those opinions? For a business, it's no longer enough to be found. Google's only, only 12 years old. But it's all about being found. It's not about being found. It's about being recommended. That's the next level that everyone's concerned about. Google's a very good tool for giving you results. It's a phenomenal tool, obviously. In fact, it's too effective at giving you results. There's a slide I, I couldn't find which had you, the, the, the Google. You press on, slide on, the, on the first list of results, and some of you, get, and some of you might go on, on page two. And so I'm clicking on page seven, and it kind of turns into this kind of the hippie dragons, and no one's ever been here before. And that's the same thing with Google, really. If you're not on the first page, if you're not recommended, then Google gives you just too much information. What we're after is a filter in our lives. We're not after more information. If you're after a filter, the, the, you, you care about the judgment criteria of that filter. Who's telling me this is better than this in that recommendation? It's all, for all of us, it's a finding someone like me. The opinions of someone like me is really important. Because whilst you're telling me this business is better than this, if I don't trust your opinion, I don't trust your filter, then it's, it's negligent. It's, 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 it's not important. So the next slide breaks all the rules of good presentations, but just go with it. Too much information. Just some stats, and there's so many stats in the world, but let's throw some important ones out here. And some of these are, are older or, or younger. Word of mouth is one and a half times more valued by consumers today than in the 70s. This is this growth pattern. One and a half times. And two times as much by consumers as traditional media. 1,500 Americans surveyed revealed that they talk about certain brands 56 times a week. And those brands are likely to be Google, Ford, and Coke, and, and whoever. But it's a massive amount of our daily words that we use are talking about brands. 81% of consumers in the US claim word of mouth the most trustworthy source. 61 people claim they buy the same brands as their friends. The whole badge of you buy it, I buy it. 81% agree they like passing on information and discounts for companies they like. 92% of adults uh, say a recommendation from friends influence them to purchase a product. 77% of conversations happen offline. We all worry about this, but an awful lot of it's already happening elsewhere. Half of all marketeers believe generating buzz and press in terms of its word of mouth is an important part of building a brand. And the last stat, which freaks me out, one in 10 Americans tells the other nine how to vote, where to eat, where to buy. It, the power of you as an opinion is massive. It's shaping not only businesses, but shaping people. It's shaping our 
global socio-political climate, word of mouth. It's a bit scary. Back to New Zealand. 78% of consumers trust what friends and other customers say about brands. Only 14% people, 14% trust what brands say about themselves. So it doesn't matter how much your ad spend is. It doesn't matter how good your TV ad is. It doesn't matter how well you create a message about it. There's still a lot of people who won't believe it as much as whether their friend says it's a good product or not. So in summary, people don't trust brands anymore. Recommendation from friends and family, much more important. It's not just about what's around here, the search thing. It's about what's good around here. So the new generation of sites like Yelp and TripAdvisor, and we've mentioned some of them before, they're built upon user recommendation and ratings, and as well as the traditional geography and search categories. So just a little commercial break. Might as well get my bit out of this. The localist word of mouth ecosystem, what we've created. Uh, this is just launched uh, last week, um, what I put in. Localist property is exactly that. It's not just what's around here, it's what's good around here. And our total business is built around this social construct. So we apply a filter to those results. But the judgment criteria of that filter is other people and the opinions of other people and the relevancy algorithm that, uh, that we learn from Google. So we celebrate the best and accordingly, we change the presentation of the results, which Google doesn't do. So uh, in this circle, you, you, you visit, you visit a business, you have a great coffee, you have a great experience, whatever it happens to be. In our ecosystem, you come to us and you rave about it through whatever system, the, the web or the, or the mobile or whatever it is. You, you rave about how good or bad or ugly this business was. You are rewarded for that as a consumer. So you get tokens, you get a, a reputation score. The, higher, the more you do, the more you add to the ecosystem, the more weight you have within our, in our algorithm. Your reputation score goes up, your opinion counts even more, which Google doesn't do. But also, we also reward you because you win, you win points, and those tokens can be redeemed for the local business and services that you are buying. For the business or service themselves, the more people talking about them, they can get the status of top rated, which means they get higher presentation in our search algorithm and, uh, and higher presentation in the algorithm in mobile. But also, um, we take it through the print as well. This is the new print guide that we're coming out with in October which is a recommendation engine in print format. So what we're doing is taking a digital medium and passing it through to a print medium. The concept of reputation doesn't just live in the world of digital and internet. We're taking it through to the rest of the media as well. So with our proposition for, for print, this is a, a lifestyle publication mixture of editorial and, and feature posts and, and, and also business profiles. And those business profiles will occur in the magazine in the rank order according to whether people have said this is a good business or not. So you can know that this magazine is all about finding what's good around your area, and there's a rank order of, well, other people like me said this one's better than this one. So you know who to buy from. You know who to who deal with. You know who to wear next to get your coffee. But that filter's important. How am I doing for time? OK. That filter's very important because it all comes down to credibility. C customers want credible local information filtered by someone who is a credible source. The most successful entities in, uh, with the highest credibility act as the local expert for all the wide range of topics. I, I, with all of us, we ask our friends every day, do you know a good dry cleaner? Do you know a good uh, laundry man? Do you know a guy I can get my warrant of fitness from? But then you, you judge the response according to whether or not they can drive. How would they know if the guy's got a good warrant of fitness service going on? We already put that judgment criteria in already. So credibility of the person you ask the information for is important. Whoops, and we do it every day. So these, uh, these sources act, um, and, and where you have the resource which has the credibility and people trust the information, it's got a great power. Bosh. Directory sites. So directory sites through the web and through mobile and, or, and through print, they connect your business with local people as, as a marketeer. Eight out of ten Aucklanders prefer to use businesses in a local area where possible. So the, the, the New Zealand entity, we talked about Google, offers great um, ability for consumers to find local businesses that have been recommended by us and get a, a great local experience that global sites can't do. This is a stat from the chairman of AOL last year, Tim Armstrong. He says that local remains one of the most disaggregated experiences on the web today. There's a lot of information out there, but simply no way for consumers to find it quickly and easily. And he took this from an American point of view. 
Now, I don't want to bag them too much, they, they're all billionaires and I'm not, but Google, um, the key area with Google, and we talked about Google Local before, and, and with, with deference to yourself, Jenny, the, the local information and local search, and in New Zealand context, and what the New Zealand information is in that ecosystem, is pretty poor in terms of the way you can filter. And also that credibility is, I as a consumer, never mind my work hat, I as a consumer don't really trust Google knows enough about this New Zealand. They've only got two people working in this country. It might be three now. But they're not a major influence in this country, and they don't understand whether the coffee's better at Ockham or across the road. That said, 40% of Google desktop searches are for local information. We're still using it as a primary source. It's our gateway to information. But Google might not be the data source that you have. So therefore, get yourself in Google, in the way that Jenny said, because people will still seek it for local information. But the information they have, which is Google says, may not be the best information that people believe. People want to find relevant. And actually, I'll do one caveat here on the nature of local. Local is a very powerful word, but what we mean as local, it changes on a daily basis and on an hour-by-hour hour basis. My local florist has a, has, a, has a mesh block, a catchment area like this, whereas my local veterinary might be like this. It's about density of, of, of need and density of, of businesses within the needs, but also how far I'm prepared to move for that thing. I'm prepared to go to Bunnings North Shore, and I still think it's pretty local versus Whangarei. Whereas if I'm looking for, a, as I say, that, that local coffee shop, I really don't think it's local if it's more than eight yards away. So if we talk about local, we just got to think about what the need base is as you, as you go through that. Once again, that, that filtration. Um, as I say, Google, Google doesn't understand that concept. Local is coming of age, though. There's an increasing move amongst consumers to be local. It's a very recession kind of thing. It's a very of-the-moment kind of thing. It's, it's all very sustainability kind of thing. We worry about how local things were produced. Um, I'm only going to shop in my local areas to support local businesses. It's, it's, it's one of those things we all can tap into like Green was a few years ago. Uh, if you think about some of the campaigns, Buy New Zealand, uh, Might Attend, your local hardware shop, whatever they happen to be. People are moving away from global brands. If you think about how Aditas screwed up the whole shirt thing last year at the Rugby World Cup, they still kind of played that global game. They said, oh, pricing here against pricing over there, and how much it costs us to source it over here. And if they played the local game and said, look, Manamatu, uh, um, Manamata Rugby wouldn't exist without us, everyone instantly, I mean, I, I instantly go, oh, OK, all right, you're one of us then. They, they refused to play that game. They kept coming in and hammering, going, we're this massive global thing. We know what we're talking about. And people didn't give a crap. So the, the, the concept of local is very important to how people perceive you as a business. And so therefore, you've got to be part of that conversation. The new generation social and mobile and directory sites allow business to engage with their local audiences on a personal level in a local area with credibility. And the most important tool of all in that matrix, as you think about that previous slide, is about uh, phone, um, mobile phones as part of that matrix. So 80% of smartphone users have looked for local information, and 88% have actually bought something as a result. Penetration. You're going to hear so much about smartphone penetration, and I'm going to steal some of Mark's slides if I do. But um, Two years ago, there was a prediction that we were going to reach 66% penetration by 2015, and already we're at 40% according to latest stats. I mean, it's, it's who you believe on these stats, because there's, there's no single source of information. But we're on this curve like this. There's a lot of noise about this, this concept of a $100 smartphone, which uh, somewhere between uh, whether it's an Android and iOS, you, you've got this massive global market called Africa, who um, there's, there's, there's generations, and in fact, whole countries, who have never touched a PC and never touched a mouse and are internet savvy because they've gone straight into the internet market through a mobile phone. And as soon as we've all been raped and pillaged for the next generation five iPhone, I'm sure they'll launch the phone that they've been sitting on for a long time, which is to get that smartphone penetration out there. Because all the telcos desperately want it in Asia and in Africa to get more and more people online who are never going to have even an electricity point to plug a PC into, never mind the fact that it gets stolen. So phone and phone penetration, as soon as that hits the market, we will just be at the 120% penetration of phones instantly. Um, and what that means for us is it's going to be massive in our daily lives. So to steal some more slides 
from someone else, I'm sure. Smartphones inform our daily lives. This is from uh, the, the Google research of Local Planet, our mobile planet came out. We search 53% of search for product information, for restaurants, for travel, for job offers, for apartments. Everything we do all day long, we're touching our phones, and everyone's got a phone in their pocket. I forgot to tell you to turn them off, never mind. So, being, being um, the new generation of directory sites, we talked about directory sites offer you locality, they offer you credibility if they're local, they offer you the ability to be found, the ability of public conversation. Being listed with location-based social sites and more importantly, mobile-enabled directory sites it means you can talk to customers right where they are, at point of purchase, when they're looking for stuff and about to do stuff. Make sure that you're listed means that consumers will be able to find you when they're right in your neighborhood. So what are those social sites? Um, so, what are, so who do we need to wrestle to the ground in order to be part of this social conversation, the new, the new fence palings of 2012 or whatever we happen to be? Uh, there's no doubt you've seen this slide or, or one like it before. This is a very messy world out there. This is a slide from Luma, um, uh, from Luma Partners, who are an uh, investment bank in the US. And they map this out, and they do this on a regular basis. And they're one of the many thousands of infographics you can find about how complex this is. Uh, this is actually just uh, months old. Copyright 12 came out the start of the year, and it's already out of date, because they haven't even got Pinterest on here. How can you keep up with this? You can't possibly keep up with this. Um, and if you look at the social mobile world, it's just as complex. Another by, by Lima Brothers here to give them credibility. Now, this goes through everything from ad agencies through to people like in Moby and all the rest of them on the slide, who are the, 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 whoever is credible in the marketplace. It, it's just crazy. Now, it, it makes me feel old when I see a slide like this. I used to, I used to be a hipster. I used to have a bike without any brakes. I used to uh, listen to seven-inch records. I used to zip around London and, and really, really cool. And I was really worried about keeping up with this thing. And, and you're going, well, I, I don't know. Well, who's, who's these guys over here? And I, I don't know enough about those yet. Should I be in with them? Should I register? Should I? And to these days, it just gives me a bit of a headache, I must admit. I let someone else worry about that stuff. Uh, but you can't afford to ignore the power of mobile, though no matter how complex the world is. At localist, 15% of our traffic comes through our mobile app. And that's probably a, a, a pretty reasonable stat. At yellow, it was about 12%. Uh, and about 12, 15% is probably a, a reasonable figure for the amount of smartphone penetration we've got in this marketplace. There's a, I'll share a stat, another stat with you from Greg Sterling of Sterling Market Intelligence. He's ex-Kelsey Group. Where, where search equals a task taken from... Uh, right through to completion, where search completion equals you've actually purchased the thing. 70% of mobile tasks are, are undertaken within one hour. So as in, you look for something, you buy it, it happens within an hour time frame. That's versus seven days in a PC-based search. So you look in, you'll, you'll search on the Monday, you think about it, you do another bit of research, you might go out, and then you might buy something on the Saturday. With your phone, you've got the 60 minutes to talk to them, get your information in front of them, tell them where you are, Tell them what, how they should buy from you instead of the other guy because we're really great to people to deal with. Think about what everyone else is talking about them and then capture the business. Social mobile is an incredibly important part of this, social mobile applications. Uh, but social mobile is still very much in its infancy in New Zealand. The, the concept of Solomo, which has been talked about, social local mobile, or um, location-based engagement. There was a slide that said LBE at POS, but I thought someone would punch me if I just put that up there. Uh, I might punch myself with all these anachronisms going around. But Solomo, if you can talk about it, is really just the concept we talked about. People are having that conversation over that piece of fence in the, and they want to know who's the best to deal with, but they're out in the marketplace buying stuff. They're not going home to check out on their PC. So being part of that conversation in a piece of geography it's just a natural extension of what we're doing. But the apps that do that are few and far between with the depth that you might experience in other marketplaces. Uh, there's a stat from the US uh, about mobile usage, um, app usage in May 11. 47% of people are using their apps for games, 47% 40 of time. 32% for social media, so that's really Facebook, if we should read that. 9% is news. 7% entertainment, and 5% is other. Probably porn, but... 
that is really just showing the fact that what people are doing. You've got your phone, you've got your, you've got your, 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 your cheap um, smartphone, you download all these games on it, and you download the social media, and that's all you're doing. You're interacting and being entertained with other people. Connectivity and, and entertainment. But you've got to think about those who don't even have a PC. If we go back to our marketplace, where they're going to bounce that PC marketplace. You've got to think about the so volume of search which is going to happen on, on phones. When New Zealand gets its act together, when these things, everyone is going to be on the phones the whole time, that 32% of traffic is going to be looking for you on, your mob on their mobile phones the whole time and looking for whether you're better than someone else because we care about reputation. Foursquare is a, is a site with probably, we talked about it before, the, the app with probably the greatest penetration in New Zealand. And they've done a great job of that penetration. It's a closed loop of check in and get your reward. I went to Burger Fuel myself on Dominion Road the other day and I checked in when I was there and they gave me a free LMP. Now, I've, I've got to say, I'm not sure how this helps the brand because I was already about to buy something from them. So all they did is they just gave me more for free. But, uh, the closed loop that's missing in that thingy is a closed loop of a simple CMS. To make it make sense for them, what should have happened is, if I'd done it once, they should be telling me in three weeks' time, I haven't seen you for a while. Do you want to come back and check in? That's the bit that's missing. That's the bit that's going to be built into this when we relaunch in about a month's time, but uh, I won't sell again. Uh, there's massive growth in this concept of check-in. Uh, Infodesk, which is a China-based research company, reports that over 200 million Chinese people are registered with check-in applications and that's a growth of 50% quarter on quarter. People are out there telling the world, I'm over here. That's all the check-in is. Going, I'm here. Who wants to talk to me? And that point of who wants to talk to me is I want information. I want something. Do it to me. It's a gamification at the moment. It's a fun game thing. But people get bored of that novelty after a while. Those, those hipsters on the front of that curve with, with their bikes are not going to be the main market. You need the main market, which is this mass adoption that comes behind them saying, I'll do it twice, and then I'll get really bored because I'm really busy. And unless you've got a good thing here for me, I'm going to stop doing it. So what is the thing that drives that interest further? As I say, I've done the pitch for Localist, apart from the fact that you can text 244, download the app for those who haven't done it already. So let's go to someone else, which is Yelp. Uh, Yelp is... Yelp is a phenomenon in the US. I don't know if anyone knows Yelp. It's grown by letting users write and review a business and then engage them, those can people through social media in terms of the way that everything posts behind it through all the main networks, and then we piggyback on, on search engine traffic. As a business, it's really directory presence marketing. You buy a listing there, and that affects your rack, your stack order. 70% is from those local ads, 21% is brand advertising, you know, premium advertising, and the rest of it. You've got a bit of deals going on the side there. Just went through an IPO, and the basis of that it was the IPO of explaining what they do. Our platform helps people find local businesses to meet their everyday needs. Whereas the more people use our platform, more of them will write the reviews. And each review that a user contributes helps expand the depth and breadth of the content on our platform and in turn drawing in more consumers, this perfect ecosystem. Increases consumer traffic, improves our value proposition to businesses as they seek low-cost ways to market. Uh, easy to use, effective marketing solutions and target a large number of internet intent-driven consumers. So people are buying, people in the local area, how do they find about you? Well, the more people going in there, that thing about credibility I talked about, they've got the credibility. So the US, it is a phenomenon. They break businesses in the US overnight by the phenomenal volume and depth. The bit that they've got too, which is the strange curve they've got too, is you then go in to, do a, uh, to read about a business, and there's a... Two and a half thousand people have read about this business before, and all of a sudden you're going, well, shit, that's an awful lot of opinions. And therefore, they get into the next stage of this, which is the second stage of filtration. If you've got two and a half thousand opinions, then going, well, does that matter anymore? Because there's going to be such a variance that some people like it, some people hate it. Who are the people like me who like it or hate it within that two and a half thousand? That's the problem they've got to break next. The, this is a picture from Australia. They went in Australia with, with census last year. And the phenomenon is the fact that, yeah, people rate us on, on Yelp, but obviously people have an opinion, which is worth celebrating, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. Proud to say people hate us on... That's funny. I think it's funny. So, so what? The point is, people are already talking about you if you're a marketer, if you're a brand, if you're a person, if you're a service, if you're an entity, if you are a... If you're a, a community entity, if a government body, whatever, people have an opinion. They are sharing that opinion 
far more than they've ever done before, with more people, with people they don't even know, with people they don't even like, and that instantaneously, and doing it at a point of purchase, when they're hot-headed, and when they are really pissed off with you, and they have no time to cool down by going home and getting on the bus. All of that's happening right now. And either you're in the game or you're out of the game, because you can't stop it from happening. So the first thing you need to do is provide excellent service. Never mind all this media and, and communication and the rest of it. Be good at what you're doing. Actually think about what you're trying to do to all customers. Because well, well, being OK is not enough. You have to be excellent because people get bothered about that and they expect excellence now. And if they don't, well, the competition's pretty fierce and they're in the instant that you can find out who's better than you at that time. The consumer market isn't going to grow, but opinion is growing. Uh, and competition is growing. So every client, get good. Be aware of other people are thinking about you. If, uh, if businesses are rating you or, or raving about you and your competition, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't you like to know what they are thinking about you? If you? Are you really providing the service you think you're providing? For a small business, uh, it's often hard to, to, to juggle all the different hats and find out and talk to your customers after you've actually left the premises. For a big business... How do you know your corporate message is actually happening on the shop floor at any time? So I did a talk to some guys, and there was someone from Placemakers there. So she was in the app whilst I was talking. She went, oh, crap. So when I just talked about Placemakers, Fung Array, and the lady in the, uh, the, the gardening center, just giving a really hard time, suing the gardening center, was a pain in the arse, and never coming here again. She's going, oh, shite. You know? That's not only one unhappy customer. As one unhappy customer, just told 60,000 other people because she just put it on the app. And she's going, okay, that's not quite corporate message. No, no, no. You've got to know it so you can mend it and make good, excellent service because people are making judgment criteria about you. If it's broken, fix it. Don't ignore it. And that's why rating sites are very important to be part of that conversation and be part of your social media engagement with any marketing teams. If someone's saying they are crap, then how do you put it better? We had a guy uh, yesterday who, who had gone into a real estate agent, and he, as he walked in the door, two of the guys were having a barney at each other, and it really put him off. They were effing and da -da -da, and he's going, well, why would I want either of you guys to sell my home? So he, we ended up the conversation, and we did the rest of it, and everyone's, everyone's, we were able to enable the business to mend that experience with that consumer. Because through our ecosystem, they had a place, he had a place to talk about it. He told a lot of people. But we had a place to put it right again. Because an old boss of mine used to say, it's not how deep in the shit you are. It's how elegantly you climb out of it. <laughs> and it's the same there. You can't control every person in your organization to be perfect every time. And you can't control everyone's experience to be exactly how you want it to be. Your consumer might be in a bad mood as well, remember. But how you get out of that experience, you, first of all, you've got to know it existed. And you've got to have the forum to talk to them. And the way you do that is making sure you claim your venue. Claiming your venue is an incredibly important part of it. Because these conversations are happening all the time. But you can only be part of that conversation, whether it's Google Local, or whether it's on Localist, or whether it's on whatever it happens to be. Claim your venue. Claim your experience. A couple of years ago, we all would have been in a conference like this, talking about how we're all going to have a virtual shop in Sim City and Second Life and isn't it all going to be wonderful and everyone's going to shop over there. Has anyone still got their Sim City virtual shop in Second Life? And blah? No. But the point is it wasn't real. It's over this thing. And we've got to be careful what is real and not. What is real is the fact that people are coming and engaging with your store, whether or not you shop from it, with all these different sites. Claim your venue. Make sure that you can control the message and be part of that conversation. Also, add to that story. Rewards, offers, that simple CMS we talked about. Why should I entice you back to me? So that's all social, local, mobile. What's the next stage? Where are we going to? Geotagging. Geotagging of documents is nothing new. There's a lot of phones and a lot of uh, cameras. You buy a digital camera these days, it will, it will, if it's got GPS enabled in it, it will tag the photo that you're taking. So you can say, I took that photo at the Eiffel Tower or that, whatever it happened to be, and then you can look on your phone, you can, applications, you can see all your photos are geo-mapped on the global map, and it's, it's wonderful. It's a photo album, as, as you might imagine it to be. Consumer engagement happens locally. We've talked about that. And uh, to be able to tag things to that moment, that location, is highly important. So assigning an XY to a document is the next stage of where we're going with life. And also taking that 
indoors is very important as well. So if someone's looking for something at a particular location, they can either go there and tell you I'm here, check in, or you can assign something to that location for when they get there. In other words, when I turn up here, all of a sudden an offer exists, a piece of paper exists, or whatever it happens to be. The breadth of this is huge. We aren't here yet because uh, GPS, which is owned by the US, isn't a very small radius. They've opened it up a lot so soldiers don't get killed. It's basically the thing. GPS is a military piece of technology. It's got a very big radius that's opened up. They won't give you any smaller because it's, yeah. So that's why you can get not past somewhere and, and um, it's not very, there's a, Chinese and Russians are sending their own satellites up there. GPS will be a completely different concept in a few years' time. Pinpointed to the meter is the intent. And when it's pinpointed to the meter or even closer than that, then it's a totally different world we're in. So if you imagine a building inspector driving up to a job like, uh, like you guys, and uh, he opens it up and he gains access to all the documentation that's associated with the XY of that job. So he doesn't even need to go into a content management system and have all the pain points of actually getting the guy trained on how to go to use a file system. He just says, I'm here. And he goes, well, if you're here, you're at 4 Kamahi Street, and here's all the paperwork you need to be worried about. Imagine a retail location where someone's looking at and with their phone, do I buy this one or this one? And the actual item in the store is GPS tagged so that therefore brings them up or there's videos and about reviews about the product and do I buy this Samsung or this one? Stop it. Within a household, there's a sort of demo the other week and I couldn't remember who gave it to me so I apologize for that. But this is a, um, it's an insurance company application where it's a geotagged CMS system and you use it in your house. So, uh, with the intent, so you would go around and use a virtual reality layer, as you, you've all seen virtual reality, I'm sure there's many demos of that, where you look at your phone's camera, through you look at the real world through your camera, and an extra layer of information is passed over the screen view. So if you went around your house and you look at, oh, that's the TV, what becomes on your screen view is all the documentation associated with the TV, which is, oh, there's the receipt, oh, there's the, the, the instruction manual for it, oh, there's the bits and pieces. For, a, for an insurance company, it's incredibly powerful. So you can go around the whole house and go, oh, look, that didn't get stolen. Oh, that's whatever it happens to be. The, the indoor location is going to be an incredible, incredible part of social local media very soon, especially if you look at the shopping mall or whatever else you, whatever you're talking about. We're not there yet. We would be early adopters of it, according to the GPS technology. Uh, Qs is a, a nice app. I don't know if anyone knows Qs. No, 149 from the App Store at the moment. You, this is exactly what that whole point of, I'm not there yet, but when I get there, tell me something. It's a, ge it's a geolocated notification system. So you go in there, you bring up a, a map, and you define an XY point. So I'll define Ponsonby Road. I'll give it a color. And then I'll assign an action to that point. It says, well, when I get to Ponsonby Road, tell me to go into Recollections and buy a wicker basket because my wife's told me to do it next time I'm driving down Ponsonby Road. Sure enough, you drive in Ponsonby Road and it goes you, bing, bing, and you get a little notification on your phone saying, don't forget to go to Recollections. And uh, it's, it's a lovely piece. What's missing from this is that concept of that circle of life is saying, I'm interested in that offer. I'm interested in that business. I'm interested in that thing. So I've seen that banner ad when I've looked on the NZ Herald, and it says, you know what, I've got Samsung's cheaper than anyone else at the moment. It's a really good product. Look at everyone else is talking about it. And you just, with a one click, that assigns you saying, well, next time I'm past that store, tell me about it, whatever pre-registration needs to happen. We're very close to that. But that really is social local mobile. The only thing is if you're downloading queues, it's a pure GPS system. Your battery life will disappear in about 15 minutes. So just be careful turning off your, your, your battery. Anything you leave running in the background, remember it's constantly pinging. I'm over here, I'm over here, I'm over here, I'm over here. So your battery life is negligent. So in summary, social strategy needs to be integrated into whatever you're doing uh, with directories and places. It should be... Part of your social story, it should be places marketing, it should be a mobile strategy, it should be a search strategy. It's all of those things combined. We worry so much about search. Am I on first page of Google? Whoa, what am I doing with my keywords and my H1 tags and my backlinks? It's only part of the story. Because people haven't, Google hasn't got the credibility of local yet. So, we're, so worry about your directory sites, because they feed Google. You to look at search for um, uh, accountants in Takipuna, it's not going to be information from Google. It's not even going to be the accountants' websites. Um, 
SMEs, people less than five percent of uh, less than five people in this country, ninety percent of all commerce happens through SMEs in New Zealand. Three hundred and fifty thousand of them. Only thirty five percent of them have got a website. So the whole concept of Google disappears if you're ever trying to reach one of those guys. So being found on a directory site is the only way they get found. Mobile strategy is the next stage of that. What's happening when someone's at a location? A mobile strategy happens on an app layer, not a, not a, not a safari layer. So social local. Make sure you are where your consumers are. Encourage the best consumers to rate and review about your business. Encourage, incentivize, make sure they, they might say the good stuff or, or tell you the bad stuff so you can get better at it and fix it. Um, post on all those things, engaging and relevant location-specific content because they're there for a reason and they want to complete that cycle. Address queries and engage them in conversations as it happens because it's not just about being found, remember, it's about being recommended. Word of mouth is the most important form of marketing. doesn't matter how much you're spending on TV. Word of mouth is the most important part of marketing. Directing places marketing must be integrated into any social strategy you've got. They have a massive effect on organic search. They are content. They are rich content. Google likes them. Bing likes them. Yahoo likes them. They rank them up. But make sure you're writing something different on every one that you do, or else they'll just say you're content farming, and they'll just ignore it after a while. Keep it going. It's no point having a vegetable patch if you ignore it year on year. It's not going to give you any more vegetables. You have to tend the garden. The other part of Google in the, um, in the caffeine update was a decaying index. If the content's old, we're going to ignore it after a period of time. So you have to keep your content fresh. Uh, smartphone penetration is now the tipping point, and location-based services through mobile are subsequently growing fast. Directory social sites that allow you to market through check-ins and offers are incredibly important. So ensure you own those venues. If someone's checking in, make sure you own the venue so you can be part of that story and incentivize and talk to them again. If they're going to comment, they're going to ask you questions, address them. There's nothing worse than me going to a place, checking in, talking to someone, asking a question, and it goes into this dead void. You're just going to get really annoyed with them. And then they're going to tell everyone else how crap they were, never mind how good the service was, never mind how good the product was. You can sell fantastic burgers, but someone gets pissed off that you haven't tweeted back to them. So making sure you do so. You can concentrate all you like on how many equality of your beetroot, but that's what gets people pissed off and not turning back to you. Consider how you utilize geotargeting as part of consumer experience. Because they're all out there, and they're all gaming on their phones, and they're all looking at social sites. So you've got to be part of that experience because 88% of them want to buy from you when they're out and about.